Welcome to part 2. You guys have chosen Pelennor, so let's see where that choice is going to lead you. Merlin takes you back to Sarum to meet the knight. Both Sagramore and Pelennor were currently in Sarum, so either one you chose would lead you back to the same village. As you get back to the village, things are looking different. This wasn't the same village that you left just a few days ago before you went hunting. People are walking very fast, they're stressed, and it looks like they're trying to evacuate. In fact, it's not what it looks like, that's actually what's happening. They are evacuating. Merlin tells you that it has begun. The Saxons are currently making their push into the east and it won't be long before they get here. The people of this village are simply leaving because while there's no army, they know very well that once the Saxons come, if they're here, they're gonna die. Like if you wanted to properly defend yourself, you had to have an actual army and that's not what they had in Sarum. He takes you to the town square, and usually this place was filled with people chatting, trading, and preparing for adventures. But now, it did not look that at all. Sitting in a corner, you see a man sharpening his sword. He looks calm, assured, and confident amidst the chaos around him. Pelennor was an exceptional knight, like he was really, really good. He was so good that he eventually defeated King Arthur three times in a joust. Arthur was so impressed that he eventually was to make him a knight at his wrong table when he actually went on and did it. Because as of right now, that hasn't happened yet. Arthur and Pelennor had never met. You and Merlin approach the knight and he introduces you to him. You get a feeling that he is a nice guy, that you can trust him, that he could be a valuable ally against the questing beast. I mean, how can you not trust a calm knight sharpening his sword while everybody else around him is panicking and trying to evacuate? He explains the situation and tells him exactly what he needs to do. He is to come with you, help you find the beast, help you lure the beast and then help you take your shot, and then you are to take the bow, go to the battle and save King Arthur. That's the quest, that's what you guys have to do. Merlin says that while you two do that, he's gonna go to the battle and oversee everything to make sure that everything is proper, because it's very important that Arthur knows nothing about this. If he did, he might do something different, which would maybe alter the prophecy, the vision, and something bad could happen that Merlin would not predict. So it's very, very important that Arthur has no idea what you guys are about to do. Now, finding the beast wasn't really a problem. Merlin knew where it was because of his vision, and like we said yesterday in part 1, as soon as you got close enough, you would hear the howling sounds it made, which would give away its position. The problem was that if you inflicted too much damage on the beast, if you startled it too much, it would run away, and then it would take you a very long time to find it again. In fact, something that I didn't mention yesterday in part 1 on purpose about Pelennor and his family is that they were supposedly predestined to always hunt this bizarre beast. I mean, if you did your research, you would obviously know, like it's at the top of the Wikipedia page. In fact, when Pelennor and Arthur are eventually going to meet, they're going to meet while he's hunting the questing bees. So it was a great thing that you had him by your side. As you're walking in the forest that Merlin told you to go to, you suddenly hear a distant, faint howling sound. At first, you think it might be a simple wolf, then 2, then 5, 10, 20, and finally 30. No, that wasn't a wolf, and that wasn't a pack of wolves. That was the questing beast, just as described. You found it. You tell Pelennor that you're gonna go up in that tree over there, climb it, and wait for him to bring the beast in this direction. He's to go to the beast, get its attention, and then slowly bring it here so that you can then take your shot. You climb up the tree, and Pelennor makes his way to the beast. When he makes visual contact with the beast, he is shocked. It doesn't look like anything that he's ever seen before. It has the head of a serpent, the body of a leopard, the legs of a lion, and the feet of a deer. Not only is it making an eerily weird and creepy sound, but it also looks very dangerous. Nonetheless, Pelennor is a very strong knight and has absolutely no fear. He shouts at the beast to get its attention, and then runs away from it to trigger its prey mechanism to cause it to come in your general direction. It works, and the beast is now running after Pelennor. But the beast is much faster than Pelennor. It catches up to him before he can make it in your line of sight. That's okay, you planned for it. If that was to happen, he was to simply fight off the beast slowly, be on the defensive, and drag it towards you. The beast is strong, but so is the knight. He manages to hold it off surprisingly well. Slowly but surely, he's getting it closer and closer to you. He's very careful to be on the defensive, to not inflict too much damage on the beast, because if it does, the beast is gonna run away and your quest is going to fail. As he's getting closer and closer with the beast, you realize that you soon have to take the shot. You take your bow, you take the arrow, and you see that it's now glowing. 
as if it sensed the presence of the bow, its counterpart, like these two work together. All you really had to do was just make sure that you hit it in the right spot. Pelinor and the beast are now within your line of sight, and the beast is completely unaware of your existence. You arm up, put the arrow, pull the bowstring, aim, take your time to aim because you have all the time in the world really, and shoot. The arrow goes and hits the beast right for the stomach exactly where you wanted it to hit. You see the beast and it's starting to glow. It's glowing in a weird color. It's now screaming and then it regurgitates a bow or what looks to be a bow from its stomach. You've never seen something like this before. Like it wasn't made out of you like most of the other bows that you've seen in your playthrough. In fact, you have no idea what it's made of. The beast then runs away like predicted, leaving you and the bow alone. Wow, you did it. You were successful. According to Merlin, this bow is going to allow you to kill the assassin before he kills King Arthur, even if he's invisible. That's good, but you have no time to lose. There's a battle going on and you have to make your way to it. Pelinor tells you that he's not going to come with you. He insists on staying here and he insists on hunting for the beast. He says that he must, that he has to. And anyways, you don't really need him anymore. You got the bow, you can just go to the battle and kill the assassin yourself. Meanwhile, Merlin gets to the battle and observes everything that's going on. He sees the Britons, he sees the Saxons, and of course he sees King Arthur. King Arthur is fierce, he's the leader, and he's very strong. And it looks like they're actually gonna win the battle. At the same time, you arrived at the battle. Merlin sees you and tells you that he's been observing the battle, and he's pretty confident that the assassin is on the battlefield right now looking to kill King Arthur. There's absolutely no time to lose, you have to kill him right now. Right, you take the bow that you just got, you take the arrow that Merlin gave you, you prepare it, you pull the bowstring with all of your strength, you aim in the general direction of King Arthur, because I mean, you don't really have to aim for anything, right? This bow is supposedly going to take care of that for you, and, well, you shoot. The arrow flies across the battlefield, curves a little bit, which goes to show just how powerful this is, and then finally stops in midair suddenly behind King Arthur. You see a dagger fall, and you see a man appear from the shadows the assassin. You then realize that the arrow went straight for his heart, exactly where you were thinking about. Arthur turns around and sees what just happened. He then sees you and Merlin in the distance. He looks at you and he knows something's up, something's going on, but he can't deal with him because he's still in the middle of a battle. He sees a large group of people that are charging towards him and he has to deal with them. He takes his shield and with one hit of the shield, he knocks all of them down. That's amazing. That's so impressive because you estimate that there was like 900 people he just knocked down. With the assassin now dead, both you and Merlin join in on the fight to help the Britons win the war. I mean, when you have Arthur and Merlin on your side, and when you have the bow that can shoot anyone you want at will without fail, you kind of have to win. Like, there's no way that you were going to lose. The battle turns to your side, and you all successfully repel the Saxons out of the territory. After the battle, you go to Merlin and he introduces you to King Arthur. Arthur then asks what happened earlier with the assassin that he was dead. You tell him that you had to kill him before he killed Arthur, that you effectively saved his life, and that you had to shoot him with the bow that Merlin made and so on. You tell him the bow, the story, the dagger, you tell him everything. Arthur then thanks you for saving his life and for actually saving the Britons for another 40 years. It turns out that this battle was won so good that the Saxons didn't dare to invade the territory for the next like 40 to 50 years. That's incredible. As a reward, Arthur promises to forever be in your debt for doing this. Like you changed the course of history, you saved his life, and he will forever be grateful. Merlin blesses you with a few buffs and allows you to keep the legendary bow and arrow. You can be trusted with it and you will probably put it to good use, like he's sure. And who knows, maybe one day you'll eventually become part of the round table. you become a knight at the round table, when Arthur goes on to eventually create it, of course. And that, my friends, marks the quest as complete. Congratulations, you were successful. You prevented the assassin from killing King Arthur, which caused him to win the battle and to push back the Saxons for a few decades, just like what happened in real history. Job well done, Alduin. Congratulations.